Hello, I'm Evan. I'm the education program leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from my basement nook of musical intrigue. In this video, I want to look closely at one of these, using the National Music Center's Instrument Exploration Toolkit. Now, I don't blame you if you don't know what the National Music Center even is. I've been working in their education department for almost 10 years now. So, we're not really a music school, but rather a music museum with a living collection. The job of my team has been to put instruments in the hands of students visiting on field trips. Then we do programs and activities that focus on core curriculum topics. We pride ourselves in tricking students into learning about mathematics, social studies, and language arts through musical exploration. But since I started, our most popular program has always been about sound science. In this series of videos, we will look at many wonderful music-making machines and figure out the science behind how they make sound. I hope you'll explore along with me as we look at two of the most interesting questions I've ever come across. How does sound work? And when does sound become music? So how does the National Music Center's Instrument Exploration Toolkit work? Well, first, we like to look at how the instrument is designed, what materials make it up, how big is it? Is it beautiful? Is it futuristic or old-timey? And most importantly, what part of it creates vibration? Once we know what part of it vibrates, then we want to know, how do I put energy into this instrument? How am I going to move to make it move in that vibrating way? Here I have four choices. It can be struck, it can be plucked, it can be air, or it can be electric. Struck, pluck, air, or electric. Pluck, struck, air, electric. So I've looked at the design, I know what part vibrates, I know how to put energy into it, I can make sound with it. But now I want to control the vibration, I want to be able to control the pitch, and I want to be able to control the volume. Timbre. Words to talk about describey things. How do you describe the quality of sound? Once we can make sound on it, we create vibrations, we control the pitch and the volume, then we, of course, we want to explore it to try and make music. Even though you may already know what this is called, let's not name our instrument yet. The materials I see are wood, plastic, and metal. Can't help noticing this shape. Seems common to a lot of instruments like this. It actually makes a little tone when I tap it. It's definitely a hollow box. It's definitely not heavy. Broken up into two halves, like this half is the box side and this half is the stick side. That ends with this guy and has these four things. So the main purpose of this part seems to be to hold these right here, which I'm gonna call strings. So the strings are held in place by these knobbly doos and they go all the way down and are connected to the box uh, with this part. There are four strings, one, two, three, four, and four knobbly doos, one, two, three, four. The knobs turn, but I'm not gonna do it yet. Okay, so we looked at it and now I definitely want to make sound on this thing. So what part of the instrument do you think vibrates? Now, if you said it's the strings, you are absolutely correct. String instruments are probably one of the largest instrument families out there. I have no idea if that's true, but it sounded right. So I want to make these strings vibrate. Is it pluck, struck, air, or electric? Can I make them go with air power? Yeah. I'd have no problem taking a small stick and tapping these strings. I'm not going to plug electricity into it. So this instrument shares a design feature that many string instruments have, which is that it has a string that is fixed at both ends. This seems like a small point, but it's actually very important. The most important invention that has a string fixed at two ends and the object that probably led to string instruments is one of these. Having this string fixed at both ends allows it to store up energy inside, what scientists like to call potential energy. All it takes is a little nudge and then it does the motion we want, a vibration. We can do things to this string to change the speed of vibration and we can do things to change the size. The point of this is not the vibration, but actually the transfer of energy into the arrow. The vibration is just a bonus. Fixed string instruments can be struck, but in the case of today's instruments, we're going to go closer to the original. 
This is a plucked instrument. We take our finger, pull the string, and let go. Or just strum across. One of the nice things about this particular instrument is I don't have to do anything here and these notes all sound very nice together, very pleasing. I'm eventually going to get bored with this though. I do want to be able to create more sounds with this different pitches and different volumes. So how do I control the pitch? I really have three different choices. One thing you'll notice is, of course, these. These are called tuning pegs and the string is wrapped around those. These ones are geared pegs. So when I turn this, it turns that and it tightens or loosens the string. Now, usually you don't see people playing with this while they're playing music. So these are a method of tuning your strings together to uh, vibrate harmoniously. Each of these strings also gives me a different pitch tuned to these notes. My dog has fleas. Now I know those aren't actually notes. G, C, E, A. Tuning's hard. I get it. Spend time learning to tune. But for now, grab a tuner and get those notes tuned up. On most string instruments, the lower pitch strings are thicker than the high pitch strings. These ones are more or less the same size. So I have the tightness of the string, I have the thickness of the string, and then I have these frets which controls the length of the vibrating part of the string. So when I make a vibration like this, it's vibrating from here to here. But if I put my finger on a fret, now it only vibrates from here to here. Of course, all these things increase or decrease the speed of the vibration. Short things vibrate faster than long things. A thick string vibrates slower than a skinny string. And a tight string vibrates faster than a loose string. This is pretty much always true. So now I can get all sorts of notes out of the thing. But what about the volume? Controlling the volume on a string instrument is quite intuitive. It really is just how much energy do we put into our action. This is controlling the size of the vibration of the string. If I only pull a little bit, it makes a very small vibration. If I pull a lot, the vibration is a lot bigger and it sounds louder. So now I can control the pitch. I can control the volume. How would I describe the timbre? Describing timbre can be tricky because we don't do it a lot, but we'll build up a vocabulary as we go. Many people describe the timbre of this instrument as sweet, mellow, soft, light, gentle. It's hard to make spiky or rough sounds with this. All right, it's time to name the instrument. It is, of course, a ukulele or ukulele, ukulele. How do you make music with it? In some ways, this is easier said than done. And in other ways, it's easier done than said. In trying to describe what musicians do in the simplest terms, I like to say musicians use pitch and volume to build patterns of sound. On string instruments, one way I like to just play around is to pick two strings and use one of them as a melody. And just find nice patterns moving up and down the neck. Look for chord charts online. Making music is a lifelong journey. I like the ukulele a lot. It's a very nice instrument to learn. It's gentle on the fingers. It doesn't hurt your fingers as much as a guitar. A lot of chords on the guitar take three or four fingers, while a lot of them on the ukulele are just one or two. You can sit the ukulele on your lap, or you can hold it right here close to your heart. This is nice that you can strum it just with your thumb while just holding it secure there, or you can lean it kind of held against here. You can also get a strap. You might have an instrument like this in your house. Go find it. Tune it up. Try to control the pitch. Try to control the volume. How would you describe the sound? Make some music. Even if you don't have one of these in your house, I know you have some kind of object that will make sound. Can you make it vibrate? Can you control the vibration? Tune in next time and we will look at another vibration making machine. Till then, happy exploring.
Thanks for watching today. Please do the like, share, subscribe thing. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you feel like it, if you have the means, please donate today. Go to studiobell.ca slash donate.